How the camel got his hump part, I the world had just begun, and the animals were working for humans. There was one lazy animal that did nothing, and said nothing but humph. Even the clever djinn was at his wit's end. In the beginning, when the world was new and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. He ate sticks and thorns and prickles, and when anybody spoke to him he said humph, just humph, and no more. Presently the horse came to him on Monday morning, with a saddle on his back and said, Camel, O oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man presently the dog came to him, with a stick in his mouth, and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man presently the ox came to him, with the yoke on his neck, and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plough like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together, and said, three, oh three, I'm very sorry for you, but that hump thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now, so I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, and they held a panchayat on the edge of the desert, and the camel came chewing cud and laughed at them. Then he said humph, and went away again. Presently there came along the jinn who was in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your desert with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Wee, said the jinn whistling, that's my camel. What does he say about it? He says humph, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll humph him if you will kindly wait a minute. Comprehension check one. What tasks, do you think, were assigned to the dog and the ox? Two why did the camel live in the middle of the desert? Three what made the dog, the horse, and the ox very angry? Four. How did the jinn know the horse was complaining against the camel? I'll humph him, I'll deal with him appropriately. Slash I'll set him right www.knrenglish.com part 2 the jinn remonstrated with the camel who said humph the camel's beautiful back suddenly grew a lump which was the camel's hump the jinn assured the camel his hump would always be a help not a hindrance the jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a walk across the desert and found the camel looking at his own reflection in a pool of water my friend said the jinn what's this i hear of your doing no work the jinn sat down, with his chin in his hand, while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning. All. On account of your idleness, said the jinn. And he went on thinking with his chin in his hand. Humph, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. I want you to work. And the camel said humph, again, but no sooner had he said it than he saw his back, that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big hump. Do. You see that, said the jinn. That's your very own hump that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday, when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I said the camel, with this hump on my back? That has a purpose, said the jinn, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating, because you can live on your hump and don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the three, and behave. And the camel went away to join the three. And from that day to this the camel always wears a humph. We call it hump now, not to hurt his feelings, but he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world, and he has never yet learned how to behave. Rudyard Kipling, abridged, check one. The camel was looking at this own reflection in the pool. What does it suggest to you about the camel? Two the camel said, humph repeatedly. How did it affect him? Three what, according to the jinn, was the use of the humph? Four, he has never yet learned to behave. In the light of 147-230. Writer's opinion about the camel? www.knr